A final principle has to do with memory and attention. There, now this is too simple. It's not just memory and attention equal learning. There's a lot of other stuff, but let's just do it as a subtraction thing. If you don't have memory or you don't have attention, you can't have learning. There is no new learning without some form of memory and some form of attention. Most school learning requires well-functioning, short, working, long-term memory systems um, and conscious attention, being able to decide, I'm going to pay attention to something, right? Um, however, there's other types of learning, like procedural learning, learning how to drive a car or walk, talk, um, and things that are based on habituated learning. Uh, and even some types of episodic memory, they can occur without a conscious attention. So, but most of the time, the things that we ask in school, we always say things like, pay attention, or this is important, because we, we realize, inherently, we realize that um, without attention, there is no memory. And one of the great things about knowing that is that we can actually choose uh, classroom interventions um, using this as a filter. If you have an activity that is not going to enhance or stimulate or assure memory, or an activity that is not going to call attention to the topic at hand, um, then maybe don't do it, okay? You say things like, okay, let's do, uh, authentic, let's have authentic learning activities. Well, that's because it's memory-based. It's, it's real to the individual. They remember prior experiences that are related to that. Authentic learning is based on memory, right? Or when we say, let's have small group activities or let's do student-centered student activities. Well, that's because it's impossible not to pay attention when you are the center of attention, right? So we can choose different methodologies, strategies, activities in the classroom using memory and attention as filters. This also makes us think about our space, our physical space, our learning environments. Have we created the right environments that will stimulate you know, memory, that will call attention to the things that are important? Knowing that memory is important for learning and knowing that attention is important for learning will help us better select high quality learning interventions in the classroom that will more naturally um, create the conditions under which a kid can learn. Okay, those are the core principles. I told you there's only a handful of them, only six things that we actually realize that we can pull from neuroscience, from lab experiments, and say, yeah, this is good information that deserves to be in the classroom. So, but those six things are enough. They're enough to create excellent learning experiences, and I hope that you apply them in your own classrooms. If you have any questions or want to read more about any of these principles, just write. Thanks a lot. Bye.